Hello, HMTCA distance learners. I'm Mrs. Lalama. I'm the assistant principal of the high school, and I just kind of want to walk you through some important information for your success as a distance learner. So we are offering three different models of instruction this year. And I'm sorry, my picture is kind of uh, covering yours here with the uh, full distance learning. We, this is available for all grades six through 12. Um, you have a regular school day. It's Monday through Friday. 7.30 to 2.40, but you're not on the computer in front of teachers all that time. You have your lunch break. You don't have to pass in the halls. So there's like little breaks for you throughout the day. And then on Wednesday, uh, there is early dismissal, okay? All right, so let's take a look. This is a regular school schedule, and it is very much the same, and I apologize for be covering part, a portion of the high schools, uh, but this will, this is, will be made available to you. Uh, this is the schedule. So this is what the students and the teachers here in the building are following, and it's the schedule for you to follow at home also. And when you log on, give it a few minutes, you know, sometimes teachers have to dismiss a class and then get ready for the next class. So there may be, you know, that four or five minutes passing. Get yourselves ready. But this is the regular schedule uh, for the school year. So your attendance matters so very much. And so Hartford Public Schools has created an exclusive attendance policy just for our virtual learners. It's very important that you understand how this works, okay? So for our full distance learners, your attendance is going to be submitted before 12 p.m. the following day. All right, because there is some criteria the teachers have to think about. And it is, and it relies greatly on your amount of participation and the work that you completed during that day. Okay, so if you were present and engaged with your teacher for your online learning and you completed any assignments that were due, you're present. You will be marked present for that particular class. If you are there, you went to your um, Google Meet, but you're just kind of not engaged. You're not sh making signs of listening, following, asking questions. So you performed between 1% and 49% and less. You took advantage. Uh, you know, you didn't take advantage of the opportunity that was in front of you. So that would be a verified virtual absence. We verified. We verified that we may be looking at you, but we're not seeing uh, the productivity, the engagement, right? So the attendance is a little bit different with virtual. And then if you do not show up for your virtual class through uh, the, uh, the um, Google Meet, then you will be an unverified virtual absence. That is a red flag for us here at school. We're not going to let many of those go by without a personal phone call home and a check-in. Everything okay? What's going on? Connectivity problems, okay? So there are going to be three markings for attendance. You work, you, you attend your classes, you complete a minimum of 50 or more, and you, you're present for the day. You're actively engaged in learning. Right? That doesn't mean you get 50%. I'm not talking about a grade here. This is your attendance. If you show up and you don't engage, you're going to be marked as verified virtual absence. You don't show up unverified virtual absence. We don't, we don't, we don't know what's going on. We don't know where you are. And just as we do when you were in the building, if you're ill, 
and you're not able to log on and attend and you're doing that on and, and not doing but it, it, we're going to classify it as unverified virtual absence that's okay that means you're sick right that that's what's going to that means you're absent all right and we would expect to hear from a family member just like any other time call the school my son or my daughter is going to be absent today from their virtual classes they're not well or for whatever reason, we still expect parents to call and report the absence. So when I talked about engagement and about being part of the class, here's a description of kind of what that active learning looks like. So I'm gonna give you a minute to look it over. I don't wanna read it for you, but I do wanna speak a little bit about each one of them briefly. So I talked about your attendance at the live instruction. We call when you face to face, even though it's through the screen, we're going to call that synchronous instruction. We're in sync. You're in sync with the teacher. You're eye to eye. She's speaking. You're listening. You're speaking. She's listening. Your classmates are there. So how long is a student? Um, the duration, student duration on online learning software. And so this could be for Mathia. Are you fulfilling your time with Khan Academy? All right, so that's another aspect. Your assignment completion in a timely manner. This is taken into consideration. Reaching out to the teacher for a live meeting, talking with other students explaining, asking questions, just as you would do in a regular classroom, those behaviors are still expected because we know that they are behaviors that promote learning. And we're still about that. It doesn't look any different. We're still gonna question, we're still gonna correct, we're still going to guide. It's just gonna look a little different. Sometimes we might ask your parents to attest or document time spent on a particular activity, okay? Um, because we need that guarantee. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we want you to do things within a time span. Sometimes we want to stretch them out and see really some good creative thought behind any kind of project or paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these are the kinds of activities that are going into your virtual attendance. Certainly, the all these things also, um, the production of work also goes towards your grade. And you'll be utilizing, if you haven't already, Google Classroom. You're going to be creating your Google Documents, meeting your teacher and your classmates on Google Meet. So you're going to have a Google day. So I talked a little bit about that synchronous so when you are logging in, it's time for biology. Here I am, I'm gonna log in. Somebody's gonna be on the other side. You need to have your camera on. Your teacher needs to see you, All right? That's an agreement that we need to make as your school and you as virtual learners, okay? We're making all kinds of agreements with kids in the building. And we need to make agreements with you virtual learners also, because we're depending on you just as you are depending on us. So the cameras are on. It's live instruction. You have your tools in front of you. You're prepared. If that teacher says, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm ready to take some notes. You want to have your notebook all ready because you're not walking back to your locker, right? You want to have your learning space prepared. There may be times when a teacher can allow others to share. You want to kind of know your way around Google Meet. How do I use the React button? All right. So that's with the camera on. Nobody could learn like that for seven and a half hours a day, right? So you're going to be independent in some of your learning. And we call that asynchronous, right? You're not in sync anymore, but you are still the learner, right? And this, is, this happens a number of ways as you're going to learn. 
it does promote independence. This is kind of you following the teacher who's not right there because maybe it's through an instructional video, right? Maybe there's a web quest or a hyperdoc that you're working on that's taking you all over the world. Okay, maybe that there's interactive PowerPoints, or again, maybe you're just working on that software. So these are things that involve technology or not, but these are things that contribute to your learning, that you are responsible for, but you are not in the classroom with the teacher. You are working more independently, more asynchronously. All right, just a clarification on those terms. And if you notice the icons across the top, ah, you're right, balance. They're all representative balance, and that's what we're looking for too. Okay, that's what we're looking for too. Synchronous and asynchronous balance. Here's some great tips. I'm gonna give a shout out to Mr. Vaseskis, track this PowerPoint down. And you know what? Some of this you probably already know, but I think these are the solid. If you can do these 10, you come, you, you come see me, I'll give you 10 more. But these are the foundations, right? Know your technology. I know we're working out some of the kinks here with the Hartford Public Schools and getting everybody laptops. Make sure you can email me, Mrs. Lama, anybody, uh, any administrator that's on the website if your uh, school technology is not working for you. We need to know that, okay? You need your camera, you need your mic, and uh, you know, you, you need to be proficient in working it to be a successful learner. You need to etch out, okay, where am I gonna do my learning? And I'm not talking studying on the bed at night and reviewing notes. I mean, sitting up, having your tools ready, actively engaging and concentrating, Right, you're home, you're still gonna have a little, a little bit of a different feel, but you really do want to find a place that's conducive for learning. It removes distraction the best that you can, all right? And you notice I don't got a lot of light going on behind me because I don't have a neutral background back there. So, I just kind of put my light in front of me. So play with it a little bit and make sure. All right, it does. This is a new kind of learning for online. It may take a little bit longer for some, right? You're investing in a time for a whole new kind of learning and, and many of you really testing it out in a, in a beginning of school manner for a whole term. So, um, you want to make sure that you are paying careful attention to how you're spending your time, All right? And there's that word balance again. So there's going to be some new and different ways for learning that maybe you haven't done before. Some of you are going to have to be doing experiments and uh, through biology, through online. Um, so there's some new experiences out there. Give it a try, give it your best, and be reflective, right? There's, again, manage your time and be prepared. Stay on pace. This is great advice for anybody. And you sophomores, juniors, and seniors know how quick you can fall behind. And I know you're all making your promises to yourself. This is the year. This is the year I'm going to rock it. This is the year you're going to rock it. And the key, manage your time, be prepared, stay on pace, stay on pace. And if you start to fall behind, you got to do something about it. You got to do something about it. Okay. That's what your teachers are there for virtually. I'm going to keep going because I could talk and talk. Um, reach out for help, right? If you're stuck. You got a, you know, you got a hand icon. You got your hand here. How? It's tricky, but you need to have the teacher's attention and explanation, just like if you were in school. So you got to reach out. Turn, keep that camera on. Your instructors and your classmates—they miss you. We miss you. You guys miss each other. We need to be visible. We need to see one another. And hey, have fun.
All right. So um, this is the last slide. I did want to just give a shout out to our athletes and the upcoming athletics. You can see there, this is a little bit outdated. We talking about the football, but I do understand that they can practice. So there's going to be some formation of teams. There's Mr. Leonard's phone number. I do have one more slide. Here's another very important slide. These are the fall coaches. So I'm going to leave this on the screen for a minute if you want to snap a picture of it. Um, Coach Benji, of, um, who, so Miss Kanairi is soccer, Mr. Benji Avani is track, Mr. Quinn is, that's the football coach, and then Mr. Dominguez is swim coach. All right, so that's for our athletes. If you haven't heard from your coaches, here's their email, reach out. And that concludes my PowerPoint for our virtual learners. Again, this won't be the last time you hear from us. We will be continued to be in contact. You can go to the HMTCA school website. There, that's where you will find your classroom codes for your classes. We in the building have been unfortunately experiencing some connectivity problems today. Today is Wednesday. So it was a little difficult for us. So I hope that that does not plague your, your opportunity um, for the virtual learning. But be mindful of that. We weren't able to post this morning. So that ends my talk, and I look forward to working with you this year. Take good care, distance learners. Talk to you soon.